Om Gyanti Mirandasya Girajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurive Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudamani Pacharine Nirisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vancha Kalpa Tarubhisya Kripa Sindhu Paye Bhaja Paditanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Avay Dvaita Gadarhar Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 uh, this particular verse that we chose today gives really two fundamental principles of knowledge that are essential for understanding how to know Krishna and how Krishna helps us to know him. <laughs> So we'll begin. Sarvasya chaham riddhi sani visto matad smirti gyanam aponam cha vedais cha savar ahameva vedyo vedanta krid vedavit eva chaham. Krishna speaking. <clears throat> I am seated in everyone's heart, and for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta. I am the knower of the Vedas. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Supreme Lord is situated as Paramatma in everyone's heart. And it's from him that all activities are initiated. That's a very powerful statement. We'll read it again. The Supreme Lord is situated as Paramatma. That means indwelling manifestation of God in everyone's heart and it is from him that all activities are initiated the living entity forgets everything of his past life but he has to act according to the direction of the supreme lord who is witness to all his work therefore he begins his work according to his past deeds Required knowledge is supplied to him and remembrance is given to him and he forgets also about his past life. Thus the Lord is not only all pervading, he is localized in everyone's heart. He awards a different fruit of results. He is worshipable not only as the impersonal Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the localized Paramatma, but as the form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. Another manifestation of Krishna, a form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. The Vedas give the right direction to people so they can properly mold their lives and come back to Godhead and back to home. The Vedas offer knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna and Krishna in his incarnation as Vyasadeva is the compiler of the Vedanta Sutra. Commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva in the Srimad Bhagavatam gives the real understanding of Vedanta Sutra. The Supreme Lord is so full that the, the, for the deliverance of the conditioned soul, he is the supplier and digester of foodstuff, the witness of his activity, and the giver of knowledge in the form of the Vedas, and as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, the teacher of Bhagavad Gita. I'll read that again. The Supreme Lord is so full that for the deliverance of the conditioned soul, he is a supplier and digester of food, the witness of our activities, the giver of knowledge, and in the form of the Vedas, and as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, the teacher of the Bhagavad Gita, he is worshipable by the conditioned soul, and thus God is all good, God is all merciful. Anta parishtam sastad gyanam. Gyananam. 
The living entity forgets as soon as he quits his prison body, but he begins his work again, initiated by the Supreme Lord. Although he forgets, the Lord gives him the intelligence to renew his work where he ended his last life. So not only does a living entity enjoy or suffer in this world, according to the dictation of the Supreme Lord, heart, but he receives the opportunity to understand the Vedas from him. If one is serious about understanding Vedic knowledge, then Krishna gives the required intelligence. Why does he present the Vedic knowledge for understanding? Because a living entity individually needs to understand Krishna. Vedic literature confirms this, yo sar so sarvam vedaya giyate. In the Vedic literature, beginning with the four Vedas, Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads and Puranas, the glories of the Supreme Lord are celebrated. By performance of Vedic rituals, discussion of the Vedic philosophy, and worship of the Lord in devotional service, he is obtained. I'll read that again. Performance of Vedic rituals, discussion of the Vedic philosophy, and worship of the Lord in devotional service, he is obtained. Therefore, the purpose of the Vedas is to understand Krishna. The Vedas give us direction by which to understand Krishna in the process of realizing him. The ultimate goal is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vedanta Sutra confirms this in the following words, Taktu Samavayat. One can attain perfection in three stages. By understanding Vedic literature, one can understand his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By performing the different processes, one can approach him. And at the end, one can attain the supreme goal, who is none other than the supreme personality of Godhead. In this first, the purpose of the Vedas, the understanding of the Vedas, and the goal of the Vedas are clearly defined. So what we have here is really an interesting expression by the Lord. This is one of the more important verses that it's important that we understand because it teaches us how the Lord works, how he acts in his different manifestations of himself, and how ultimately he gives the results according to our desire. And he is also kind enough to remind us in our present life where we should begin in our present life, from our past life. So that is the Lord. He is he's seated in everyone's heart. If you want to remember him, he helps you. If you want knowledge of him, he supplies it. And if you want to forget him, he will also give you the intelligence by which you can rationalize and, re and reason to come up with good reasons why you shouldn't worship him, you should forget him. Why are the atheists so convinced of their philosophies? Because they are being supplied by the Lord the understanding of the knowledge that they have. In other words, although their philosophies are completely wrong and it's completely opposite of real knowledge and truth, still, because they believe it, the Lord helps them. And as they use their intelligence in the same way, they get more knowledge of, this, of the same. So God is for, for God providing forgetfulness. You want to forget me? Okay. Here's how you can do it. <laughs> so he's so kind that he simply fulfills the desires of the living entity as they work. But one who wants to know Krishna, then Krishna supplies the direction by which they can mold their lives in such a way that they perform activities which will bring them back to Krishna, back to the spiritual world. 
So one thing is clear in this particular verse, we are simply the desirer. We are not karta. Karta means the doer. Although sometimes the living entity is giving that title of being karta, that karta really is a relative term in relationship to many other activities that are being performed that supplies ultimately the conclusion of what we desire. In other words, it's not like because I desire something, it's going to happen. I desire something, I put something in motion. When I put something in motion, then the material energy works under the direction of the Lord to give, to give the results accordingly. We cannot perform an activity and simply get the results based on our own efforts. Material energy supplies the ingredients by which the activity is performed and will give the results accordingly. That accordingly is, if we want to forget Krishna, we will have many reasons and quality, we will have the capability to rationalize clearly why we should forget him. But if we want to remember him, then that same material energy now becomes an instrument of the Lord to inspire us in that mood of remembrance. So Krishna is using the external energy to either supply the results of our material activities or fulfill our desires on the spiritual platform. So behind all of this is the hand of the Lord. And when we understand that, then we can understand that, you know, there's no need to become proud of our activities because ultimately it's not only us. We simply have the desire and everything else comes after we desire because desire causes things to happen. And by things happening, then we put the energies in motion and they work according to Krishna's arrangement to according to the nature of our type of desire. Mm -hmm. Now you might say, well, that's nice, but it's not always absolute. If you're not meant to get something, this is on the material world, you won't get it because you don't have the currency to get it. In other words, if you go into a particular shopping store, mall or whatever and you want to buy something for a hundred dollars and you only have 90 you can't purchase it you'd have to wait till you get that other ten dollars and then you'll be able to make the purchase in the same way that uh, unless we have the the certain karmic account then the material energy will give us the act and will not allow us to get the, the results we are looking for. And that karmic account is not so much only on the results, but it is on the happiness and distress that comes by way of the efforts that we make. That's why people struggle so hard to attain something, but they're not meant to get it and they get suffering instead or they're meant to get suffering and therefore they get it. Or even if they're meant to get it, they get it. And then after some time, because it's the nature of material life is temporary and it, it, it's gone, it's lost in time. But on the spiritual platform, then we come to what is called Vedanta. Vedanta anta means conclusion or ultimate end. Veda means knowledge, and Anta means the end of knowledge. What is the end of knowledge is to know Krishna. That is the end of all knowledge. So unless knowledge brings one to devotional service, which is the means by which one can perform activities and receive knowledge of Krishna, then it's not what we say worthy. It's not real knowledge. There is a thing called silpa vidya. Silpa means material generally, and vidya means that knowledge that is material. So people have material knowledge, you know, that's more like craftsmanship or some kind of technical skills, such as, you know, you go to work and you're an IT expert. It's simple silpa vidya. It's more or less in the mode of 
fashion, and it is simply, um, it's material. <laughs> it's, it's in one sense, it's not knowledge because all it is is they're developing technical skills. That. Or you might say, well, I have to have some knowledge in order to develop the technical skills and Krishna will provide that through the material energy because that's what you desire. But real knowledge means to know Krishna as the verse says here, that the knowledge that, know, that, that is meant to know him, he compiles it. He is the original source of that knowledge. So sometimes people say, well, this knowledge is compiled by people in this world. No, they are simply bringing that knowledge down from the original source, which is coming from Krishna. Tene Brahma Hida Adi Kabiye. That in the heart of Lord Brahma, he received Vedic knowledge from Krishna directly in the heart, and that knowledge manifested itself in the creation of the material world. So the knowledge of how material world goes on is ultimately coming from Krishna. But that knowledge is not so important. Real knowledge is to know who I am, what is God, what is my relationship with God, and how to attain the benefit of that relationship or the goal of that relationship, which is love of God. So knowledge, what is directed towards understanding our relationship with God, Krishna, is real knowledge. And that's found in Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, here it says the commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva gives a real understanding of Vedanta Sutra. So Srimad Bhagavatam is simply uh, Vyasadeva's knowledge of taking the Vedanta Sutras and then transforming them into the Brahma Sutras and from there, expanding them into Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is Srimad Bhagavatam, because Bhagavatam is the pure knowledge coming from the Lord himself through his representatives. When Vyasadeva originally made his attempt to give knowledge to, to the conditioned souls in the form of so much type and so much Vedic knowledge, he was feeling unsatisfied. And just at the time when he was really feeling unsatisfied, when it reached a, a, a sense of despondency, his guru appeared, Sri Narada Muni, and could see. And he told him, the reason why you're feeling that is because you haven't presented the name, fame, form, qualities, and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You said everything else. Because of it is a vast, as Krishna says in the second chapter, he says, Trigunya Visaya Veda Nistrigunya Bhavarjuna Nir Dwandvo Nitya Sattva Stone Nir Yoga Shema Advava. That the Vedas deal with the three modes of material nature. And he says to Arjun, rise above these material nature and be transcendental, be free from all anxieties and all dualities. Dualities comes because it's in the three modes and uh, engage ultimately in the real activity of Vedanta or Vedas. Vedas are actually teaching us the essence. So there's different branches of the Vedas. There's the material branch. There's, you know, so many, you have the Shrutis, you have the Shmitis, you have the Puranas, you have the Itihasas, you have the Brahma Sutras, you have the, you know, the Dharma Sutras, and so many categories. So Vedic knowledge is the source of all knowledge, material and spiritual. The essence of Vedic knowledge is the Puranas, and the highest form of all Puranas is Srimad Bhagavatam, because Brahma Bhagavatam is Amalam Puranam. So if we read and study carefully Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll know everything we need to know about Krishna and more. And that knowledge awakens within us transcendental 
devotion to Krishna, which inspires one to serve the Lord in different ways. Not that inspiration is not some, some mechanical expression. It's become, it comes right from the heart, and the heart becomes spontaneously attracted to the service of the Lord. Now, this is the process of learning how to come to the conclusion of all knowledge, which is to worship the supreme love personality of Godhead in devotion. And that's what Krishna is saying here. He compiles it, he knows it, and it is the means to know him. It is the means to know him. So Vedic knowledge is available through the process of accepting Krishna in the form of his spiritual master, because knowledge comes from three sources. It comes from guru, it comes from Shastra, which is Krishna, and it comes from the saints who have gone before. And it comes down in a line of teachers that are directly connected to Krishna himself. So Krishna fulfills your desire according to how you desire, but he also teaches you what is the real desire, and that is devotional to, devotion to him. And he supplies everything, as it says here. And this is this is indicated in the, some of the previous verses in this chapter. He is the supplier and digester of food. He sits within the stomach as Agni, which is the fire of digestion, which is the which is the essential principle of health for the body. When digestion is working nicely, the body is healthy. Everything depends on digestion. And that is the principle coming from Ayurveda. Ayur means life, longevity of life. And Veda means that knowledge that gives longevity. And he's also the witness of activities. Oops, what are we doing here? We're trying. Yeah, well, there's the, I am the fire of digestion, he says. And I join with the life errors outgoing and in kind to just digest the four types of food. Yeah, so this is what is mentioned in the previous verse. When fire is not blazing, there is no hunger. When his fire is in order, we become hungry. So keeping the fire of digestion means following the principles of proper health, which means balancing the energies in the body, the three doshas, according to the principles given in the Ayurvedic system of knowledge. But he's um, back to the other verse. Well, that's very important to know that we're not independent in our eating process. He is a supplier and digestion of food. He sees every activity, but he's, he's a neutral witness. He doesn't judge our activities, but he is giving us the results. That's why God is the most closest thing to him, us, because he sits within everyone's heart as Paramatma. Paramatma is the full manifestation of the Lord in dwelling within the heart of all the beings. Full in the sense that he is non-different than his position as Bhagavan but he plays a different role. That's it. And this role, he witnesses and he also gives the results according to our desires like that. He's a witness of, and he's also the giver of knowledge in the form of the Vedas. So that's what we were talking about. Vedic knowledge is the means to know him. And as Prabhupada ends, he's merciful. Not only merciful, but completely merciful and completely good. So you see, when you understand a little bit more, you understand that Krishna is such a big part of our life, even though we may not be consciously aware of it. Not only is a big part, he's practically everything. <laughs> the only thing that he is not is our desire. Our desires are really our own creation. 
He wants us to desire the right way. So he inspires that through various energies of his own, especially the knowledge coming from the Vedas, the presence of his representative, the spiritual master, and the process of pure devotional service. But still, that desire is independent and we can desire, as it says here, if we want to know him, he helps. If you want to forget him, he helps. And if you want to remember him, he's there. So God is everything in his energies. Okay, so this is a very interesting verse. It can be studied even deeper because there's so much in this verse. Um, we'll stop there and see what if there's any comments or questions. No comments or questions? Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness, Guru Maharaj. I was uh, listening to this lecture and uh, certain questions arise in my mind as I'm listening about the Paramatma feature versus the Bhagavan feature of the Lord. And uh, let me begin with the first question. The very first question I have is, when we say Krishna fulfills all desires, we do know that some of our desires don't get fulfilled. So is that because of uh, us not having the karmic currency? Or is it because Krishna actively doesn't want us to have that? Well, it's not an absolute principle in either one of them. It's relative to the individual. And that relativity will give you different results. So in a material sense, it's karma, generally. But even for the non-devotees, the Lord can intervene and change the results of one's karma. But that's up to him, and that usually is inspired by the, the by the person who petitions the Lord to come for whatever reason. Just like sometimes the materialist, they not the materialist, other spiritualists from other groups, they say, "Well, you're making the uh, everything so mechanical. You do this, and you get this result. You do this, you get this result." That's generally true. But the mercy of the Lord is always available, and that, that mercy can also change the results of one's reactions. Now, for the last part, oh, what was that last question again? I can't remember how you phrased it, the second part. Does Krishna have an active role, which I know he does, but I'm trying to understand it, in changing our karma so that even if we may desire something if it's not good he won't let that happen he may or may not do that it says there is a general statement that he says if he if it's if a devotee wants something material he may give it but if he sees that that brings that person away from him he won't do it again you may do it once, but it'll give you a chance. Sometimes he gives it just to see how you will, will receive it. In other words, sometimes it is good, good spiritual principles to fulfill some material desire, which will help that person move forward in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. But 
that's not an absolute principle. It's it depends on the person, but it depends on the desire. But Krishna does that like that. He said, he said I give only once, generally. Hmm. So he can do that. Because if if the devotee wants Krishna, but he still wants material life, uh, sometimes Krishna will give him a little bit of material life just to pacify him. But if he gives him too much, then he that the devotee might think that there's some success there. Now for a serious devotee, one who's fixed in Krishna consciousness, he won't allow that to happen. Hmm. And a sort of follow-up question um, that arose in my mind as I was listening is, if we say Krishna is neutrally witnessing, then how can we agree that he's also directing the living entity? He is. He says right there. So Rasya Jaham Riddhisani Fisto. But that's Mirtia Gyanama Pohanam Chat. He says, You want knowledge? You get it. You want remembrance? I give it. You want forgetfulness? He's directing according to our desire. Yeah. You desire, and he. So he doesn't the... interfere with our free will. He will honor what that you... entity desires. Your free will is based on your desire only. You can desire Krishna or you can desire something material. Mm. Mm. But if he wants, he can stop that too, but he doesn't because the principle of love is based on free choice. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. If we desire Krishna, then Krishna will show us how we can achieve him. Mm. But sometimes we have desires that are similar, material and spiritual. So we want Krishna, but we want something material. So whatever desire is stronger, you'll probably get the results of that. Mm. We have to strengthen our desire for Krishna. Mm. Overcoming our, our material desires. Mm. That's good. Thank you so much. Anything else? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, sorry, I was speaking on mute, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, I have one question and I was saying that one thing which I learned from today verse uh, is that uh, we really need to focus on our desire, what kind of desire we are having in our heart. So Krishna can arrange something in that in like fulfillment of the desire, if it's the right desire for our Krishna Bhakti. But yeah. I have also like different related question, uh, slightly related to Shidevi Mataji, uh, that uh, in office work, like it happens that when we are doing good things, uh, it's not that we are looking for very high positions or some very different uh, awards or something. But in spite of doing good, if we are positioned or pushed back uh, because of corporate world politics and all, so for a devotee should we feel that this is a Krishna desire, Krishna wants this way, or should we try to do something different to get some material kind of things? We should try to fulfill the desire that Krishna wants us to do. That's the whole process of bhakti. Krishna tells you you that the desire he wants through the spiritual master. And that and that's our that's for our benefit. Whatever Krishna ordains, and there's one 
pastime in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where the demons and the devotees were fighting. And the demons had Maya Donovan there. Maya Donovan is a mystical demon. And when the demons were being killed, he would throw them in this lake of elixir and their bodies would be healed and they would come back even stronger than before. And again, fight. But the demigods couldn't kill the demons. They were just kept coming back because of Maya Donovan. So some of the chief demigods went to Brahma. Brahma came to Vishnu and said, this is the situation. So Vish Vishnu made a plan. He uh, transformed Shiva and Brahma into a cow and calf. And that cow and calf start drinking up this, this uh, fountain of elixir. And when the demons saw that, they wanted to stop that. But Maya said, no, this is the will of the Lord. You can't stop it. And Prabhupada says, in his commentary, he says, you may desire, and I may desire, but Krishna's desire is really what is important. So part of, a good part of the whole process of bhakti is learning what Krishna wants from us. You know, you some kind of you 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 may you might be doing your service, but you may not completely understand what Krishna wants from you as you're doing your service. So sometimes you come across that by yourself, just simply by trial and error, and you start to understand. But the best way sometimes is just to ask the spiritual master if he's available. If he's not available, some senior devotee. Well, what do you think? How best can I serve Krishna? Well, what do I need to do to improve my service to Krishna? All these are intelligent questions that will bring about results, positive results. You got to ask. Sometimes I'm serving very nicely, but I'm not in the right mood. So the mood might need to be changed in order to bring about a satisfaction in the service and pleasing Krishna. So that's an indication. I'm thinking I'm all right, but the mood I'm performing my devotional service in is not conducive to, to, the, to offering it to Krishna. Or I may find myself in the situation where I have a choice on how to serve. And I might think, well, I might take what I like to do over what I should do. Well, that's another way to, to see, although we're in, we apparently in the process of devotional service, we are not fully there because there are these details fine tune the mood and the activity like that. So learning what Krishna wants is really means how to execute devotional service. You might be doing something that's nice, but Krishna doesn't want it. He wants you to serve in a different way. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely, Guru Maharaj. Uh, like having the right desire with the right mood. and Sometimes we say, first deserve and then desire. Guru Maharaj, if you can please explain that, sorry. Hmm? So first, desire means like we should be on the right platform, then we should try to have right desire. 
This is how we perform devotional service. Not that we just mechanically go through the motions. We should know exactly what to do and how to do it and try to apply those principles in our activities. A lot of times we just waste time doing things that really are not really needed or desired. But we do it anyway because we have we we act sometimes just whimsically. Or someone else is doing it. It might be what they're supposed to do, but it's not might not be what you're supposed to be doing. Now we're talking about devotees who are who've been around for a while. In the beginning, Krishna well through his representative engage you in some kind of service just to connect you. And then after a while, you have, you have to start to understand how best to serve. And you'll get the answer if you develop that desire. Because as it says here, Krishna fulfills your desire. So Vasudhyam Riddhi Sani stone. He's sitting in the heart. Sudha. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Sudha Mataji. Uh, thank you, Prabhuji. Um, uh, Hare Krishna. Dhanat Pranav, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. So thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice class. I just have a question, not question, just want to understand if my understanding is correct. Uh, desire, uh, Guru Maharaj, it's a basis for everything. Um, so so uh, for a desire also, Guru Maharaj, uh, like uh, understanding is like, uh, again, it connects to your consciousness, right? Like uh, uh, we have to um, purify our consciousness to have the right desires. So we can get developed that discrimination, like, you know, to understand like if a desire is like Krishna conscious, uh, because right now I feel like uh, my- or, uh, we can, or we can ask. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, a lot of times because our consciousness takes some time to purify, in the meantime, we simply ask. For a more advanced devotee, Krishna tells them directly. For uh, for those who are not so advanced, we have to, you know, ask. <laughs> How can I serve? Mm -hmm. So, Guru Maharaj, I connects to your consciousness, like... Uh, like if your consciousness is pure, like again, your desires will be uh, purified and uh, you can understand actually what Krishna wants. Well, if you have pure desire, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have pure consciousness, pure consciousness is, is complete Krishna consciousness. But pure desire is, I want only Krishna and I'm going to do, I'm going to be willing to do whatever is necessary to achieve that. Mm -hmm. If that's there, then you're on. You're just a matter of time. That's pure desire, which leads to pure consciousness. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it, it's you know our desires are basically mixed. We still want to enjoy something in this material world, and we still want to be Krishna conscious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's um, so it's important to have a pure desire, and when you have the desire, it will lead to pure consciousness. How do you get the pure desire? Um, that. Mm -hmm. Can we come to the stage of desiring purely simply by wanting to desire purely? Guru uh, Maharaj, that's from spiritual master. Well, it helps, you know, as that verse, Yanatas Chaburiyo Yavasainam. 
Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. Mm -hmm. O beloved child of the gurus, those whose intelligence are uh, irresolute are many branched. So if you fix your mind on Krishna, and you fix on your mind on the process of achieving Krishna and devotion, that's pure desire. But can you do that on the stage you're on? On higher stages, it's easy. When you're on the platform of Nishta, it's easy. But before, before that, the platform of Nartanavitti means that we're going to be bombarded with our material tendencies. They'll appear in our life to attract us. If we are fixed in knowledge, even on that lower platform, we can reject these uh, these uh, attempts by material nature to bring us into her activities. Your knowledge is not strong, then you'll be easily allured, or you may even see something as material to be Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. So the safe way is really to depend on the Supreme Lord through his representatives mm -hmm. and ask questions regarding how to serve. Because service is the whole process. The whole process is based on service. Because we are serving now the material energy. Now we have to redirect our service mentality towards Krishna. That's all. And redirecting that means knowing how to do it. And that comes from the knowledge given to us by the spiritual master, Krishna, the, the Shastras, the Acharyas who have gone before. Thank you. It's, it's quite easy if you have pure desire. I want only Krishna. Mm -hmm. You can say that with surety and then you'll see the activities that you perform will bring you to that consciousness. If you want only Krishna. And Krishna will help you because it says this is this verse. If you want to know him, he helps you. You want to forget him? He helps you. Yes, Guru. So it's very important to have the desire, like I want Krishna, then fixing um, your intelligence on Krishna. Yeah, I want Krishna and whatever it takes mm -hmm. to achieve. So service redirecting to Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Guru. Fully. Nice. Fully, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Krishna. It's easy. But the, the, how you do, the, develop that is, is hearing about Krishna. Because as you hear about Krishna, you develop attraction for Krishna. Mm -hmm. As you develop your attraction for Krishna, it becomes easier to want Krishna away from everything else. But if you don't know much about Krishna, mm -hmm. then the, the, the uh, strength of your desire is weak. And that means that you'll be easily pulled away by other things that appear in the environment that are not Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. So hearing about Krishna awakens our attraction for Krishna. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, Maharaj. So as a neophyte uh, devotee, so I should keep telling my mind, okay, my desire is to serve Krishna. My desire is I want Krishna. So it will help me to have the desire. And, um, as, as, as the desire gets stronger, the activities will also be comparable to your desire. You'll do those things. Because mm -hmm. desire is not inactive. It it's inspires one to speak or to think or to act in a certain way. Okay. Mm -hmm. keep uh, repeatedly telling your mind it to be active in the mind. <laughs> Stop yeah, mind. That's the initial stages, but mm -hmm. the best thing is to hear about Krishna more and more. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the direct process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So Kumar's hearing and reading, does it play like a uh, same impact? Like uh, uh, both hearing? Are the same. Yeah, both are the same. Both are the same. Both of we should do the, both. But as mm -hmm. Prabhupada says, to hear from the self-realized soul has mm -hmm. great potency because of the sound vibration also. The reading is also good, but direct hearing is actually how the Vedas were manifested. Mm. The Vedas came by Shruti. Shruti means hearing. So another name for Veda is Shruti. Mm. So by hearing from self-realized souls, and that's the more uh, concentrated effort when we're reading the books, it's almost as good, but the sound vibration of the person's words have a certain potency to purify our consciousness. And Prabhupada would do that sometimes. He would be in India, and it would be the audience was Hindi. And the audience, he could only speak, they would only understand Hindi. So he had his Western disciples there also. So sometimes they would leave. He would say, no, you simply hear. Even if you don't understand the sound vibration has potency. Mm -hmm. oh. See the point? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for hearing that's, an that's, that's an extreme example to show you how sound vibration is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for your association. Sri Devi Mataji, you have raised your hand. You have other question? Uh, yes, Prabhu, if you don't mind. Yes, Mataji, please. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have another question. What happens to the middle of the road people? They say, we don't want to be so fanatical. We don't want to be so, you know, immersed in this. We'll, we'll come, we'll come to the temple and we'll just dip into devotional service now and then by doing some service on Sunday, give donation, this, that. But they, 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 haven't, they haven't even entered the path of bhakti yet. Hmm. They're just playing with some of the principles of bhakti on an external, uh, external. Hmm. So that means they have. If they are, they're real. They're really. They're not really up to the standard at all. So that means they are not even at the stage of other shraddha, or are are they at other shraddha and sadhu sangha because they are with devotees. They are not totally involved. But. Yeah, but the path of bhakti means to accept the activities of devotional service. Hmm. There's no such, no, no such statement as, well, don't be fanatical. Being fanatical for the right thing is good. <laughs> are, the, are, the, are the gopis fanatical? <laughs> from our point of view, they are. But from their point of view, it's normal. Hmm. So how can we encourage them in a way that that would be attractive without coming across as fanatical or trying to grab them? You find ways to attract them. Know the person and see what see what works. Thank you. Guru. You can try different things, you know. Yes, good marriage. You know, the different varieties of things you can offer to them. <laughs> and see if anything works. Would you say the best way would be to be a good example of a good devotee oneself so they can see for themselves what is the result of bhakti? Yeah, yeah. That had, that's that that's the level of your potency. The more you're the stricter you're following, the more potency you have to affect others. 
Mm. Two people can say the same thing, but there may be a difference in spiritual potency. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for giving but, this example. Yeah. That, and when it comes to preaching, it's like that. When it comes to just repeating, anybody can repeat anything. Right, right. The, we must, uh, our words must carry conviction ourselves, and then only we'll be able to convey that conviction to others. Yeah, the conviction comes by saying that this is, this is correct because it's coming from Krishna, it's coming from the Shastras, it's coming from the Guru. So that, that gives us the conviction that this is true. This is the best. This is correct. It's quite a delicate thing because they are not willing really to hear much. They are convinced that what they are doing is right. And, and don't, then don't waste your time there. There's other people who are more receptible and look for, look for them or go to them. You know, don't throw don't don't throw seeds on barren ground. Mm. Yes. You make an attempt, you see it's not gonna work. You go somewhere else. Thank you. For that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Vrindavanath. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we don't have any other question. Okay, Thank we you. can stop here. But Guru and, Maharaj, uh, I have one follow-up if I can ask, please. Yeah. Uh, just continuation of Sudha Mataji, uh, as you suggested that uh, right or pure desire and to cultivate the desire, we need to focus on hearing and chanting. And uh, maybe I feel like hearing chanting finally it will lead to serving devotees because that's something is going to change our consciousness yeah that's true for sure and that's direct if you're actually hearing and chanting yeah it'll work that work in that way thank you guru maharaj thank you Krishna. Okay. Thank you very much and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Anand Koti Vishnu Vrind ki jai. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.